Okay, hey, welcome to another episode of On The Wrist from Off The Cuff. They have a fun review for you from the brand Merker Watch. They're a Chinese-based brand, and uh, in 2019, they actually did acquire Perry Pollen. So you can see here, this is a watch branded as a uh, Pierre, or yeah, I think it's probably Pierre Pollen. Um, and in terms of the type of watch, it's an everyday dress watch, some key comic characteristics and design language uh, to look out for when you're checking out something within this space of course you're going to want a clean classic kind of minimalist design something that's and something that is also sensibly sized this is the new uh pierre pollen business levy series hand winding sector dial in at 38 millimeters and it's pretty much Merker's take on the classic sector dial combining the iconic jlc master control 25th anniversary and longine heritage sector dial and it does come in a pretty impressive to watch uh, leather roll which i thought was pretty nice also guys this thing only costs 90 bucks direct yes 90 dollars so uh you know i always have to look out for you guys and and really keep mixing things up find stuff that is really just high value uh really low entry level price here um and i'm happy to share it with you guys they also do have discount codes i think there's one uh which i'll leave in the description where i think you spend 100 and you get 20 dollars off this is under that so uh you know you could use it for if you're buying multiples or something like that but i think this is a really good looking watch as you can see it actually comes in a surprisingly nice uh little leather watch roll which i'll definitely show you guys and yeah it's just it's kind of fun although within kind of my own personal collecting journey i've kind of moved on to uh, more expensive pieces stuff like this i still really get a kick out of especially sharing it with folks who might actually be looking to buy something within this uh, price point so with that said let's go ahead zoom the camera out get this piece in hand and take a closer look okay guys so let's actually check out this really unique packaging so you can see it's essentially a little portfolio a little roll as you can see there and you have information you know a little tool there and inside oh i still have the little plastic uh you know protector so you guys know that came on there um and yeah you got this little button down button up roll with the even it, it even has like the Merker logo on the uh button faces which i thought was really cool it's canvas here uh, kind of soft. I mean, it's probably not real leather. I don't know Leatherette maybe leather, but it's it's soft um, And yeah, I was just surprised by how cool that was so like you could basically, you know store travel with these guys However, you want to do it um, You know pretty easily. Let's let's actually Put it to the test boom And then I guess this would kind of oh maybe goes underneath right there there you have it very secure so i don't know i i just very surprised especially in something that costs 90 bucks like normally hey all the money will go into the watch um and you kind of uh you know don't get to experience necessarily the fun niceties that come along with the packing material but in this case yeah i don't know the packaging was actually really cool so uh, big ups to Merker. <laughs> I thought that was nice. I also signed. So, and then you can see the way that this secures. It also has the button. And I guess, like, you know, if you have some bigger watches in there, you even can get a little relief and have that other button so this thing can be, a, you know, a little bit thicker. So if you store a bunch of stuff in there, maybe a bunch of straps, who knows? But I don't know. There's something really cool about that. Just thought I would share. And here we go. Now to this bad boy right here. Check this out. So everybody loves a good sector dial. They were kind of all the craze uh, a couple years ago. And it's nice to see, uh, you know, the, these types of fun layouts uh, make it into really super affordable stuff. Uh, one of the nice things about this particular sector dial is you can see it has the brushed finish. And then on top of that matte finish. So there's a lot of contrast there. Even though color-wise, it's not a lot of pop. You do get that little blue pop, of course. And then these blue hands, which I don't know if they've been thermally blued. But I would say that if they are, you know, 
they look like they are. And if they're not, then they did a really good job fooling me. So uh, this thing is pretty cool. And I'm sure some of you are saying, hey, that looks like a JLC, um, you know, or this looks like a launching that you've seen and that's true uh those models are probably some of the bigger mainstream sector dials but you know during a time sector dials uh you know not just recently but uh looking back historically at one point were were you know all the rage and a lot of it has to do with the absolute legibility while still finding ways to be really quite refined uh, so at a glance, you can tell the time easily, but then you kind of want to hold your gaze onto this dial because there's so many fun little details. So uh, getting into the dimensions, 38 and a half millimeter diameter, so perfect size for a watch like this, um, at least for somebody with a larger wrist. <laughs> and then uh, 20, uh, I'm sorry, 12.6 millimeters thick, and that is including the crystal. So without the crystal, you gotta imagine it's closer to 10 millimeters. Uh, lug to lug, 46 and a half, which is gonna fit a lot of different wrists really well. Um, and you can see there, there's a nice little stacked uh, style to this right so that mid case is still visually quite thin and then of course you know the crystal is uh was which is a box domed k1 mineral crystal so very clear because it's uh you know it's it's not a sapphire so no worry about milkiness unfortunately you are gonna have to worry about uh strength and durability uh typically uh you know mineral crystals are better in terms of shatter resistance but in terms of scratches uh they're not quite as strong so they can get scuffed or scratched a little bit easier um but you can see here in this case it's not like this is some sports watch so you're going to probably be you know treating it a little bit nicer and wearing it on occasions where it's going to be less dangerous for it anyway i mean there's a lot of people who wear dress watches that just have a, you know a hesalite or a plexiglass crystal they can polish up uh so can't be too mad especially at this price point would have been nice to get sapphire yes I, I agree. Would they? They probably would have had to raise the price, you know, 30, 50 bucks, something like that. Um, but uh, you know, in, in this case, I think it does the job and it keeps the price point low enough to where, yeah, different people can get a hold of it and enjoy this uh, really nice aesthetic. So the bezel has a really nice step to it, as you can see. So you get stepped bezel, and then you get that box shape uh, crystal there, which has another step. So it really does help uh, accentuate the thin mid case there because the height is broken down, uh, which I think is really smart. The uh, crown is signed. It's a push-pull crown, uh, you know, and it also, this is manual winding, which I have it wound all the way up, so I'm not going to be able to wind it too much more. Um, and then in terms of the case back, it is solid and etched, as you can see there. And the movement inside is honestly unspecified, so I don't know which movement this is. I'm sure it's some Chinese movement. It is non-hacking. I don't know what the beat rate is on it, but it's, it has a small seconds. So honestly, uh, you know, it's gonna be harder to tell if it does have a lower beat rate because it's so short. Essentially, you're not gonna be able to see kind of that stuttering that you would from a much longer hand. So if there ever was a situation to have a lower beat rate, it probably would be one with a you know small seconds subdial. So again, all these things tie in to the bargain pricing. Uh, then getting into the dial details, guys, as you can see, really beautiful dual finish that I mentioned earlier printed sector dial brushed silver uh track over that nice matte silver uh, and then of course the running second sub dial has uh it's located at six o'clock uh has those concentric circles uh within the finish they're kind of like a, an old cd or compact disc for those of you who might remember and then of course you do have blued hands all the way around from that small seconds hand over to these beautifully skeletonized syringe hands uh, that you're going to see here water resistance not surprisingly only 50 meters and a lot of that has to do of course with the thinness with the honestly the type of watch it is right and then the construction you know you do have i don't see a lot of room <laughs> within this bezel and crystal to you know to put a ton of uh you know 
gaskets or waterproofing also you know the crown it's a winding it's a manual wind movement so it's not screw down so again less places for you to really put a lot of gaskets the case back is screw in versus pop off um so you know that's that's a good sign in terms of the, at least that 50 meters of water resistance uh being probably you know pretty realistic so if you get splashed whatever it rains you're wearing this you you probably it's not the end of the watch right so good thing there uh another nice thing is that it only has 20 millimeter lugs uh so a lot of times in these kind of in between sizes 38 and a half uh brands can sometimes play around with 18 19 you know other different sizes 21s uh so it's nice to have a very simple 20 millimeter lug with also drilled and uh, some of you are thinking wow that's actually a pretty nice buckle i, I mean a uh, buck nice buckle and strap combination it is i'm actually really surprised and again branded marker it says genuine leather 20 millimeters it also has quick release spring bars so these are even easier to take off but then of course whatever you swap on if you don't have quick release spring bars the nice thing is you do have the drilled lugs uh, you know nicely polished let's go ahead and give it a quick wipe here off camera sorry about that guys uh so let's go ahead and take a look nice milled uh you know pin buckle clasp there even that finger section is milled uh, i do not know what this stands for if it's f o o or f o d who knows uh, unless you do then let me know in the comments below i do really like this cross hatch pattern here it reminds me of uh, Safiano leather which is not cheap so uh, very cool and I will say even the pliability and the flexibility on this piece is actually really really supple so another pleasant surprise so with that said let's actually get it on the wrist and see how it wears all right now as you can see this Pierre Pollen wears really nice on my seven and a half inch wrist it's actually you know probably in between seven and a quarter and seven and a half depending on where I wear it so don't be too alarmed and think oh man this, this guy has a big wrist so on my wrist this watch would look much larger but uh it's gonna look a lot larger when you get close to the camera like this there's gonna be a lot of lens distortion right and that's why sometimes when you're scrolling through instagram you see a wristy and it just makes a watch look really huge again lens distortion guys so i'll leave my wrist down here and just tighten the shot up so you guys can still get a detailed look while just having a bit of a truer aspect ratio you can see it is really nicely centered again for me this is a real sweet spot for a watch uh you know without a dive bezel um or you know a gmt bezel or anything like that when you have something that's going to be just a little bit more all dial oriented uh for me and my wrist size i think that you know 38 and a half is a wonderful sweet spot 38 38 and a half 39 those are all numbers when i see this type of watch that i will look for and then depending you know i might be able to go a little smaller um i feel like 37 with uh you know depending on the design of the lugs can still wear really nice for me but uh anything smaller than that uh, honestly just gets into this weird space for me where it just seems uh you know noticeably small versus it just being you know maybe a more vintage style watch that just fits that aesthetic it just feels a little undersized but that's just my preference guys uh and my thoughts but you can see lays really nice on the wrist and then you know you do get that nice visual interest of the stepped dial from the side profile going up into that boxed crystal very nice you can see this angle that's a good looking watch like it doesn't look cheap like i'm very surprised I mean, i'm not too surprised honestly like Merker, they typically are pretty good on the design aspect and then you know their execution is definitely better than you would expect at the price point but i don't know something about this just because it's such a you know iconic design within kind of the more luxury space uh, because it's such a classic look and maybe a little bit less generic uh, that you might find in some more minimalist, you know, maybe more Bauhaus inspired pieces. The details that are done on here are actually executed really well. So, yeah, under 100 bucks, I mean, 
Is there a better kind of everyday dress watch than this one? I don't know. Like, uh, I'm sure you could find one with, with different specs. You might find one with, you know, quartz, uh, with sapphire, whatever, you know, your preferences might be. But in terms of, like, sector dials, this thing is sweet. Like, I don't even know that anything else exists within this price point uh, that is going to come close to this. So, I mean, if you're one of those people who come up with all these weird lists, you know, like, how can I make a you know, five watch, three watch collection for under X amount. Like this is one of those watches that is going to save those types of lists because of how cheap it is. Like it's, it's pretty impressive. Uh, so with that said, let's actually get it off the wrist. Although there's no loom for loom shots, we can still do some low light transition and closing thoughts. Okay. Let's go ahead and hit the lights here. All right, guys I already have a little bit of light out here because I do like to, of course, have this low light transition because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field, enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you can find yourself coming in and out of buildings, walking underneath overhangs. Oh, without, without loom, the camera doesn't want to stay focused on this bad boy. So we'll be a little more careful. We won't let it get too dark. All right. But the whole point of this is, yeah, you're not always going to be out in direct sunlight. Like my uh, studio lights probably do a pretty good job of simulating, you know, direct sunlight, good lighting, great lighting at that. Um, but that's not really where you're always going to live. And honestly, it's nice to see how these colors, textures, and finishes render like in less than optimal lighting to maybe even include some harsh lighting that might expose any type of production defects, which you can see here. There's not a lot for them to get wrong because it's such a clean and simple piece. And you can see even the brushing there, uh, the light just glides very uniformly over. So nothing uh, found or you know rough or harsh in terms of the finishing. And then the dial is actually pretty impressively finished. If you look at the way the light transitions in a really neat way over that brushed disc versus that nice kind of matte satinized uh, pale silver there that's a lot flatter which typically is just going to hold its kind of tone along the way so you have that constant right uh, which is going to be the center of the dial and you know to the outskirts as well but then you also have that dynamic play that you're getting from that outer ring. And then, of course, the subdial is giving you a lot of play as well. So very cool, very handsome piece, guys. I mean, the only thing it's missing is the pedigree, right? <laughs> like if Tassot made this watch, they could sell it for, you know, $800 and be absolute heroes. People would love it. It would have sapphire it would have a Swiss movement and it would cost a lot more, unfortunately, you know, um, in this case, it doesn't, right? You don't have to pay 10 times as much for something like this. You can just get it now for 90 bucks, which is pretty wild. Uh, so closing dots guys on the wrist, it wears really well. It has that vintage feel and appearance. Uh, but of course it's not vintage, so you don't have to worry about, you know, a bunch of services, uh, or, you know, being too gentle with it, babying it. You can really take this and wear it every day as an everyday piece. And the good news is 90 bucks later, if something bad happens to it, you could always replace it. You could replace it several times, um, before you start probably having diminishing returns on that investment. So in terms of model variants, it's also available in a 36 millimeter case. Yes, for those of you that were looking at this and going, man, if only, if only uh, it was a little smaller. Well, yeah, it is smaller. There is a smaller variation. 36 millimeter case. And then there are also various dial kind of color combinations. Uh, so there'll be different dial setups with different colorways. So definitely check the, uh, the links in the description uh, for that. In terms of comparable models, again, this is a, you know, very different aesthetic than I would typically see under a hundred bucks. Um, but if you think of something like, I think within the same space, um, which is going to cost a lot more, like five times more, what this kind of does remind me of is, uh, let's say the Baltic MR01, which I have, uh, in silver and it's a great watch. Um, actually it's not wound right now but it, it's also a 
hand wound piece. Oh, it's a little dusty. Also a hand wind piece. Also very classic. Not necessarily its own aesthetic. They didn't invent Breguet numerals, did they? Um, Breguet did. Uh, so, but this is a very desirable piece. It also hand wound, but this one has a micro rotor, so it's uh, automatic technically. But at the end of the day, Chinese movement, you know, uh, l legacy design, quite small, very traditional, um, non-hacking, right? Um, but, you know, this one is going to give you Sapphire and whatnot, and, you know, a little bit more prestigious name in terms of, uh, actually, I shouldn't say prestigious because I'm pretty sure Pierre Pollen is actually... Um, you know, uh, probably had a nice heyday at some point where Baltic is just a really hot and cool hip micro brand right now. But I would say, yeah, even the outer rim there, you can see it has a little bit of similar play. And then the dial has a little bit different. But yeah, again, five times more. And also uh, hard to get because they come in and out of production in batches. So people send, tend to mark those up and, you know, try to make money off of them. Uh, not me. Not yet, anyway. Not yet. Um, so for me, guys, the bottom line is this is a lot of fun in a kind of stylish, super affordable package under 100 bucks. And, yeah, the comparable, that only one I could think of was significantly more expensive, five times more expensive. And it wasn't mainstream. It was also from, you know, uh, a small independent brand so with that said let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you like the video please do a like and if you haven't already please subscribe for more content just like this thanks guys